accused the West of occupying Ukraine and engaging in nuclear blackmail. He again warned he'd use all means to protect Russia, including nuclear weapons. The only things that are going up are inflation, interest rates and bankers' bonuses. We had a real feeling that after the pandemic things were going to get better. But we were... just issued uh, this statement says the Queen died. Taking Roe away deprives half of America. 100,000 reservists. I'm going to abolish it altogether. Oh, President Donald Trump has reportedly not only made... I'm ashamed of the, the biggest tax cuts. Now, by the grace of God, if the new million. Things are a little bit hectic at home at the moment, so I've gone to Portugal. A few things. Bins need taking out. The, the grass could really do with being mowed, and um, just don't check the downstairs toilet, to be honest. It's, uh, yeah, just flush it, just flush it. Um, also, our tendency's up in a month, so get packing. All right, gotta go. Ciao. My name's Matt, and I'm a professionally trained furniture maker here in the UK, and honestly, I've had just about enough of it all. We're still reeling from the worst pandemic in 100 years, everyone hates each other instead of trying to understand each other, the cost of living is going up, nuclear wars around the corner, the queen just died, my tenancy's about to end, and I can't undo my bloody laces. So what am I doing about it? Running away from it all and living off grid in a van. Here's how I'm gonna do it. First, I need to buy a van and then fit it out with everything I need to survive. Sleeping, cooking, pooping, the lot. All of which require a variety of skills, many of which I have no experience in whatsoever. Let's go. Now imagine this, you splash out buying a van, then spend an extra 10 to 15,000 pounds renovating it, then you drive it 100 miles down the road and it just breaks down or simply blows up. Obviously wouldn't be the best scenario in the world, would it? Now, unfortunately, I don't have an ounce of knowledge when it comes to vehicles. All I know is that the windscreen wash goes in here. But I'll tell you who does have a knowledge on vehicles, a mechanic. And where do you find the best mechanics, you may ask? Well, let me introduce you to Mark Hanawin. Currently the owner of We Sell Parts, an online distributor of literally any vehicle part you need, but perhaps more notably, former mechanic at McLaren for the legendary Formula One driver, Ayrton Senna. Mark offered to spend the day with me hunting for vans in Southampton, where we originally had a list of five lots to visit. However, upon finding out we would be filming, that quickly dropped down to three, all of which taught me a valuable lesson when it comes to buying vans, the most striking of which being the third, because I really, really wasn't ready for it. What does the service history look like? The first lot was Vansco, where we were greeted by Paul, definitely the most quintessential vehicle salesman I've ever met, but, <laughs> but was very welcoming and generous with his time and was able to tell us everything we needed to know about the vehicles on offer. Oh, yeah. Someone's stealing a Mercedes bag. You sell parts for that, Mark. You'll be amazed what gets taken. Yeah. No, I wouldn't. I used to own a garden centre, somebody nicked a shed. <laughs> yep. Now, despite my best efforts, I put a lot of time into researching what I should be looking for when it comes to buying vans, as I didn't want to be solely relying on Mark. Yes, that, that and that, and, and the wheel arch here. Well. However, once I came face to face with a van I was looking to buy, the sheer magnitude of the task at hand reared its ugly head, and I completely froze. For those of you into psychology, this was the moment in the Dunning-Kruger effect where I crashed from Mount Stupid to the Valley of Despair. The result being me following Mark like a lost child, just agreeing with everything he said. Lesson number one. One is do your research and then do some more because I just didn't feel confident in what I was looking at. <laughs> this guy is <laughs> proving to be very useful already. I'd be like, yeah, it's definitely a van. I'll have that. <laughs> Despite test driving the van and being very impressed with its condition and performance. Nothing on it, it's a tidy van. Yeah. It was at the upper end of my budget and my non-existent haggling skills were no match against a van salesman. So unfortunately we had to pass on the offer and move to the next lot. Now here is where lesson two came to light. Yes. Trust your gut. From the moment we pulled up to the second lot, yeah. something just didn't feel right. Ooh. But we decided to give it a punt anyway. Don't get me wrong, the owners were incredibly friendly, but we quickly came to the conclusion that many of the vehicles were ex-delivery vans. The white ones are ex-DPD and the yellow ones are ex-DHL. Right. This usually suggests they've had a hard life and there were many giveaways that confirmed this. It looks a bit scuffed inside. This is a better one. You've got overspray down the inside of that light. These might be new discs on this one. You've got overspray on the valve stem. This has got overspray all over the tyre. 
show this on the film. I can't start the bloody <laughs> thing. How do you start it? I think you've just guaranteed this is being shown on the film. <laughs> in addition to visual checks, I also used an app to get the history of the vehicle to see if there were any red flags with its MOTs or financing. Passed every time. It's an advisory on a rear anti-roll bar link worn. Which side does it say the bush is a bit worn? It's, there's a warning here for a finance data recorded on this vehicle. They can't sell it to you if it's not. They need to check it. As with anything, you get what you pay for and honestly, their prices seem to reflect this fairly. Issues, however, arose when it came to discussing prices as we firstly couldn't find the salesman. Does he want to sell anything? And then, once we found them, we were made aware of a few problems when it came to paying for the van in full that would require a roundabout way to remedy and could also potentially expose me to a lot of risk. They probably were legit, but my gut told me to move on. No, I'm very dubious about that. Oh, before I walk off with the keys. Before I walk off with them. <laughs> Which leads us to rule number three. You see, Prior to today, I had been scouring the internet for months looking for a van, but not only was finding a good quality, reasonably priced one very difficult, getting the jump on them before they were snagged up was a whole other thing. I read about this rule countless times in the videos and articles I mentioned earlier, but upon seeing the ad for this van, something just felt right about it and I took a big risk by ignoring the rule. In fact, I even put a holding fee on it the week prior. Lesson number three is don't get attached. What stood out to me about this van is it's an extra long wheelbase, which is unlike any of the other vans that I had seen thus far. And better yet, it still included a reversing camera, 270 degree rear doors, a heavy duty loading ramp, relatively low mileage, and was slap bang in the middle of my budget. I'm trying not to get excited, so I don't want to get attached to it prematurely, and I'm biased because I've got a holding fee on it, but it does look quite good. Well, I, think, I think you've done the right thing putting the holding money on it, because it's the only extra long one you've seen. Well, yeah. Good. That's all I needed to hear. Inside, we found a few scuffs on the roof that had some light surface rust. Oh no, what is that? Oh, something uh, there must rattle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Interestingly, it's actually a, it's packaging for some anti-vibration product. <laughs> In addition, some of the tyres needed replacing and the brake discs were a little worn, but none of which seemed to be instant red flags. Um, structurally, it seems like a very good van. The test drive also came up pretty inconclusive. I mean, it runs. I, I think this is as good as that, the yeah. first one we looked at, personally. Okay. It's got a lot of you about it, hasn't it? It's a yeah. big Me van. Lumbering, yeah. oath of a van. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Having driven many vans in the past, most of which being long wheelbases, the extra long wheelbase in this one didn't feel much different. Hey, that's oh, no effort. Watch me hit something. That is, I like that. Oh, hello. Although I did still bottle it when it came to reversing into the yard. Are you going to swing round in the road? No, I'm going, I'm going nose first. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh. not a chance. Honestly, I had slight concerns about dealing with a company called Same Day Car Finance when I was looking to purchase in full, but Brendan and Alex were a pleasure to deal with and there were no issues whatsoever and we completed the transaction there and then. It's van pickup day. Nice and early though, they're not open yet. So, I've chosen to hold myself up in the spoons next door. Convenient, eh? Right, we're about to pull up at the yard, so I need to figure out how to manoeuvre this thing into it. Now, if you're excited about what I'm planning on doing with the inside of this van, this series will document everything. <laughs> However, if you want to see the steps in more detail, take a look at the series I'm posting on my second channel where you'll be able to watch things at a more leisurely, educational pace. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video if you haven't already, because this is going to be my biggest, riskiest and most challenging project yet. I'll see you in the next one.